But anyway, if you don't know the word, just lift your hands and worship. But stand up on your feet this morning because God is worthy to be praised. He sent his son to die on the cross for us because God said no matter what you've been through or where you've been, he's not going to give up on you. And he sent his son to guarantee that. Amen. So enter into worship with us this morning. up on Jesus, he ain't giving up on me, ain't nothing gonna come between us, I ain't giving up on hell, I ain't giving up on Jesus, he ain't giving up on me, ain't nothing gonna come between us, I ain't giving up on hell. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I thank God I have a church that believes in the power and resurrecting power of Jesus' name. That at his name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord of Lord. Amen. Come on, give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Two quick announcements that we have. All the, the kids move up from their classes, age groups, they move up next Sunday. So if you have a child and they're moving up, make sure that they're at the right class next Sunday. Everybody say, my kids are moving up next Sunday. Now if they don't, that's on you. Amen. Only other announcement we have is this Tuesday at 1030. Yeah, unless he's got it. It's Bible study, so if you're able to be at it at 1030 Tuesday morning, come on down to the Meet the Fellowship Hall and have your word on Tuesday. With the walking Bible, we get to call pastor. Amen. And you'll be blessed. Do you have your tithes and your offerings? Lift them up high. We don't pass the plates here. If you're new here today, we don't we don't uh, hold them at the back and make you feel uh, we don't guilt you into giving or make you feel like you have to. But what we want you to know is when you obey God in His Word, that there is a blessing for you. He will He will protect your money. And how many of you are like me? And I need all the protection on my finances I can get. I need all the blessings in my finances I can get. And when you tithe and when you give an offering, you can go back to God and say, I am a tither, I am a giver, and I receive the blessings that you have in store for my life, and for my family, and for this church. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you now and we thank you that you have made a way for us to give back to the, to the ministry, to what you have in store for the world. Father, we know that this money goes in. And Father, we know that, that you don't actually receive the money itself there in heaven. But you said that you receive it. It's the act of that you receive, the obedience that you receive. And Father, we know that we'll take the money here and further the kingdom. And Father, I thank you that every household that is represented here today, under the sound of my voice, those that are online listening and giving, Father, that they have blessings over their finances, protection over their homes, sickness cannot invade their houses, that they are blessed and healthy, walking in prosperity according to your word, because your word says that we can claim that when we are tithers and we are givers, and we give you all the praise for that, and we just thank you for it, and with a shout, the church said, amen and amen. Also, if you have an offer, not a tithe, we have a little white church up here, and you can just give that, that goes to doing extra things in the church. If you've seen we're replacing doors and doing some upfits and things, and uh, if you want to just give a, a dollar or a five or a ten or a hundred, whatever, just let the Lord lose you on it and just stick it in that little church and we'll, we will use it. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me Defender behind me Defender behind me I won't fear I won't fear I'm filled with anointing I'm filled with anointing My cup's overflowing. Cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. I won't fear. I won't fear. The people of God sing hallelujah.
guides me. He always guides me. Through mountains and valleys. Mountains and valleys. Say His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. He restores my soul. Restores my
Hallelujah. He's worthy. Praise God. You say, well, I haven't seen any overflow. Well, just start confessing it. Start believing it. Start thanking God for it. And it'll come upon you. Hallelujah. Praise God. We, you know, it's not enough just to get by. I believe that God has more for us. He wants us to live in abundance. In John's Gospel, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse, the Bible says the thief, who's the thief? The devil. He's come but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more, just barely get along. Well, just make it by the skin of your teeth. No, he said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Praise God. Abundantly means more than enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> and he's the God of more than enough. Amen. Praise God. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20, he said, Now unto him that is able. Hallelujah. We serve a God, Lee, that's able. Hallelujah. Able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why we encourage you. Set your goals high. Set your faith high. Believe God for something big because you know, it's like uh, one minister said, I'd rather set my goals high and get half of them than to set it at zero and get every bit of it. Hallelujah. Our God's a big God, and He wants to bless His people. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're living in the overflow. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I believe that there's still more to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe we're just beginning to get into the edge of it, really. But God is going to do some great things in these last days. I don't know where, uh, you know, preachers, uh, a lot of them, get the idea that somehow the church is weaker and uh, is, you know, not going to be able to do anything in these last days because... The, of the wickedness that's in our land. You know, I'm not dead. I can I can see, I can hear, I know, I see what's going on. But you know, the Bible said that when darkness covers the earth and gross darkness, the people, I'm telling you, them that don't know God, you know, that uh, are, you know, trying to change the way that we live here in America, uh, they're wicked. They don't know God. They'll, they'll use His name, not the name Jesus, but they'll say God, you know. But they don't use the name Jesus. Why? Because there's power. Power. Wonder-working power in that mighty name. Hallelujah. And, uh, but uh, He said, when darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people, you arise and shine. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. So we need to, you know, not pay no attention much to what they're saying. We're praying and believing God for a mighty move of His Spirit across this nation. God is not finished with America. They can say that America's failing, America's going down the tubes. But they are liars, and God's word is true. God is going to do a work in this nation, and they're going to know God is shaking this nation. He's shaking the political arena in this nation. I've never heard so much stupidity come out of a person's mouth in all of my life. They're fighting for their life because they see that they're losing their death hold, their death grip upon this nation. And there's someone else that's got a hold of this nation. I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm not talking about Mike Pence. But I'm talking about God Almighty. 
and his name is Jesus and he's got a grip upon this nation and he's not going to let go. He's got a grip on you and he's not going to let go. God is going to do what he said that he would do. Numbers 23 verse 19 said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, shall he not do it? If he's spoken it, shall he not make it good? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we're going to see moves of God like we've never seen before. I remember some years ago, matter of fact, it'd be 11 years ago, this May or November the 22nd, on a Saturday night. I don't know, they just something about Saturday night. I got born again on Saturday night, got filled with the Holy Ghost on Saturday night, and I see visions on Saturday night. <laughs> Hallelujah. But 11 years ago, this coming November the 22nd, I saw the glory of God come into the sanctuary of where we were, and the back wall of the church disappeared, and there was a great cloud on the horizon, and I began to see something that the only way I know how to describe it was like white, pure white liquid love flowing out of that cloud. And when it came to the ground, it was like a fog that began to roll into the sanctuary. And it covered all the people. I'm telling you, when the glory of God covers you, there's not anything that God will not do and cannot do in your life. There's no sickness and disease that can stand in the presence of God. There's no sin that can stand in the presence of God. I believe that when that takes place, every, every lost person will be saved and every backslidden person will come back to God and there will be a, a praise and a glory that will be lifted up. You know, praise has a voice. Hallelujah. And we need to release that voice and let the Spirit of God come in our midst. You don't have to be afraid of the Holy Ghost. I didn't care if he'd knock me down and slide me out through the hall there. Hallelujah. I'll be all, just let me alone. I'll be all right when I wake up. Glory to God. But I saw the glory of God come in and it filled, covered all the people. And when it come up on the platform and got up to my knees, I fell in it. I tell you, you, oh, hallelujah. When the glory of God comes in its strength, and in its power, nobody will be able to stand in it. But that's all right. You know, that was in the Old Testament. And if we were in, you know, in the Old Testament, it said the ministers could not stand and minister by reason of the cloud. I'm telling you, if they can experience it in the Old Covenant, and we're living in a new covenant that is established upon better promises, then we ought to see the glory of God as well. Hallelujah. And God is ready. I, I don't let, we, we, we not said no more, God's about to do it. God's about to do it. No, God is doing it. You just need to open up your heart and your mind and get in on it. Praise God. Just jump in and begin to swim around in it and let God do in you what He desires to do. And when He is finished with you, you're going to shine by the glory of God. And the Bible said in Isaiah 60 that people will come to the brightness of thy rising. Praise God. It's not time for us to go and stick our head in the sand like an ostrich. That leaves your rear end exposed and you're out to get it kicked. It's a time that we are to stand tall and straight and confess the name of Jesus before a lost and a dying world and tell them that God is the the God of the God of Israel. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's my God. He's your God. And God is real in this land. And I'm telling you, it's not God's about to do it, about to do it. God is doing it. We just got to open up our heart and our eyes and receive what the Spirit of God is desiring to do in our midst. And I'm telling you, you'll be blessed beyond measure. You'll be in the overflow. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of you want to be in the overflow? Hallelujah. There'll be all kinds of miracles of healing take place. 
I'm telling you, that it'd be like when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. It said there were, Bible scholars say that there were somewhere between two and three million people that came out of Egypt and there was not one feeble person among them. <coughs> Praise God. And so we're not going out with less than what we were birthed into this earth with. Praise God. When we got born again, we got Jesus. Hallelujah. The greatest gift of all. But there's a, a power of God, a spirit of God that wants to fill your life, that wants to do things in your life. He will, like they said, He will hold you close. He'll never let you go. Hallelujah. And He'll always be with you. Listen, when you get born again and the Spirit of God comes to live on the inside of you, you'll never be alone another day as long as you live. He didn't say in the 16th chapter of John, He said, when the Spirit is come, He will abide with you uh, till the end of the week anyhow. Oh, uh, he, He'll abide with you till the last of the month. Now, well, maybe He'll stay with you for the year and then He'll go. No, he said, He will abide with you forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you'll never be alone another day as long as you live. <clears throat> you may not be surrounded with people, but the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of you, He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll be with you always, even till the end of this age. Hallelujah. And that means until this age comes to an end, I got somebody with me. I got somebody in me. And I got somebody that can fix what I need fixed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I got somebody in me that knows what I need. He knows how to fix it. He knows how to lead me. He knows how to guide me. He knows how to speak through me. And I'm telling you, we need to get this old a mentality of well, you know, I, I, you know, I just don't know if I can. Oh, shut up! I tell you, you can do it. You can do everything that God says you can do. For the greater one lives on the inside of you. Don't you know? Tuck tail and run. But uh, you know, the Bible said in First John four four, "You are of God, little children, and you have overcome." Them, them who he, the verses before that, he's talking about them little demons and them little devils. You know, think about this. They're, they're, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. <clears throat> There's not enough devils in hell. I don't know how many devils there are. They must be a lot of them. But, uh, and demons. But there's not enough of them. There's not enough of them. Hell does not have enough demons and devils to overcome you because the greater one who defeated him and defeated death, hell, and the grave lives on the inside of you. Hallelujah. That's something to shout about. Hallelujah. And when you begin to realize that, you'll start living in the overflow. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some overflowing blessing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just worship you, Lord. We praise you. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Father God, you said in your word that your eyes search to and fro throughout the whole earth seeking whom you may, uh, may be strong, show yourself strong in their behalf. We just say, God, you, we're here. You don't have to look any further. Right here in Gleaning Mission Church, we're here. We need you. We want you. <coughs> we desire you. Let your spirit fall. Let your spirit come in this place today. We welcome you. We need you. We're crying out for you. And we believe that we are entering in, that we are in the overflow, that you are blessing our life beyond measure, that there will be no want or no lack in our life. Spiritually, there'll be no lack. Spiritually, there'll 
Uh, physically, there'll be no lack. And financially, there'll be no lack because we're in the overflow of your blessing. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're living in the overflow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to ask them to sing that again. Hallelujah. And I tell you, if you want to get in on the overflow, just jump in. You say, how do I do that? Just by faith. Lord, I'm jumping in the overflow. I'm not going to be left out. I'm going to get in on it. I want to be a part of it. What God is doing in these last days. Hallelujah. And we shall not be defeated, but we shall be victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you believe that, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sing it. Hallelujah.
stepping over into the overflow. <laughs> By faith, I'm stepping over into the overflow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to ask my wife to come up here. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We just feel like God wants to give people the desires of their heart. You know, the people will always say, I know God said He would meet our needs, but did He say He'd give us our desires? Yes. Yes. Not only in the Old Testament, you can sit down if you need to, but then we're going to have you to get back up in a little bit. But, uh, you know, in, in the Old Covenant, in Psalms, He said if we would, uh, the, uh, you know, trust in the Lord, and that if we would delight ourselves in Him, and we would commit our way or roll our way upon Him, he would give us the desires of our heart. Now I want you to think for just a little bit. If you could have a desire of your heart right now, what would it be? Would it be the salvation of a loved one? Would it be healing for you or for your family? Would it be a financial blessing for somebody that is struggling? And then in Mark chapter 11, is referred to as the, uh, the faith chapter in the Bible. Now, Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 11 talks about those, uh, you know, giants of faith. But in Mark 11, Jesus taught us how to operate in the faith of God. And he said, when he cursed the fig tree, you remember the story. He cursed the fig tree, and the next day when they came back by, Peter, calling to remember, said, Lord, behold the fig tree that thou cursed. It's withered up and dried up from the root. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Well, if we're going to have faith, we need the God kind, don't we? Hallelujah. And Romans 12, 3 says, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So the faith that you have is the faith that God has given you. And then he said, whosoever shall say, he's telling them this is how it works. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou cast into the sea, and doubt not in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, believe when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now that's Jesus. Jesus cannot lie. That's his word. He cannot lie. You say, yeah, but what if I desire the wrong thing? Well, this is the key. If you're seeking after God with your whole heart, who do you think plants those desires within you? It's God. God puts good desires in your heart. Amen. And He wants to bless you. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. But then there's also another key. Verse 25 says that when you stand praying, <clears throat> if you have all against any, forgive them. For if you do not forgive, then neither will the Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. So when we believe in God for desires, we must make sure our heart is pure and our heart is clean. 
you have any ought against anybody, I don't know, you know who it is, how, how many it is, or whatever. But if you have anything against anybody, in the name of Jesus, forgive them. If you want that desire to be fulfilled. Amen? Praise God. <laughs> now, I don't know just how we're going to do it, but uh, I don't know, maybe if you just want to come and stand up here in front, if, if there's something, a desire in your heart, and you, you've been praying, you've been believing, and you're waiting on God to fulfill that desire, we want you to come up here. I believe God's going to do it. We're in some overflow today. Amen. Praise God. Don't know, nobody have any desire? <laughs> and be straight with God because God will be straight with you. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel a anointing. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we, we're stepping into the overflow. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's not anything that God can't do. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe somebody's going to receive new lungs today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Overflow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Overflow. Yeah. Give you the desires of your heart. Yes. When you meet with Jesus, some people say Jesus told them this, Jesus told them that. But I'm telling you something. When you've had an encounter with Jesus, you will know it and everybody else will know it. Amen. So you will know today that you have had an encounter with Jesus because that's the desire of your heart. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Now, as we pray, you you know, God knows what you, your desire is, but he said you have to confess it. You have to confess it. Confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart and doubt not. And you shall have them. Whatever that desire is. It's like I said, if it's the desire to see a, a lost loved one saved, that's, a, that's one of the greatest desires you can have. If it's for healing, for somebody else, healing for yourself. God is in the healing business. He's in the miracle working business. And he works miracles even when the doctors say there's no hope. <laughs> We've seen it time and time again. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, let's get started. Huh? She, she's wanting to get in it right quick. Yeah. 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 Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Financial blessing. You need a different job, a better job. God has one just for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Or if you just want a closer walk with Him. That's a good desire. I don't know about you. I need more of Him. Hallelujah. That's why I'm stepping over into that overflow. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. We're still believing for people to get out of financial bondage, get out of financial debt. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you will, right where you are, just lift your hand to the Lord. We're going to pray, and as we pray, you pray right there where you are. And I'm believing for an outflow of the Spirit of God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shukamaha. Sandalabo. Sikatalabaha. 
I, I believe there's a gift of faith operating in this place today. Hallelujah. To receive miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that name that is above every name, we come before you. We humble ourselves before you. We honor you. And we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that gives us access into your holy, holy presence. And by faith, now, through the blood of Jesus, we enter into your holy, divine presence. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare miracles in this place, in overflow. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, for any desire in their heart, a desire for a lost person, a desire for healing, a desire for financial miracles in their life, a desire for better jobs, Father God, we right now lift that up to you and we stand with these people today and those that are desiring just a closer walk with you. And Father God, I count myself in on that. I want to walk closer to you. I desire a closeness with you like I've never had before. I want to be in your presence. I want to be in the overflow. And I don't believe that it's going to happen someday. I believe it's going to happen right now. It's a now time. It's a now move of God. God, you're here and you're moving in this place. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to walk across into these people. And as you pass by them, that you touch them, that you touch every single one of them. Touch them. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch them by the power of the Holy Ghost and give them, grant them the desire of their heart. And Father God, we do not doubt, but we believe. And so we count it done in the mighty name of Jesus. Some will know it the moment that they walk out of this building. Some will know it maybe one day next week. It's all of a sudden they'll know, hey, my miracle, I got it. I got my desire. It's happened. It's manifested. It's mine. And they will worship you and praise you and give you the glory. And Father God, we thank you. We praise you that you are a miracle working God and you love your children and you want to pour out overflow into their life, overflowing blessing, blessings that will come upon them, blessings that will overtake them, and that they'll just be so blessed that they can't keep it to themselves, but they'll begin to tell people, and they'll begin to give it out. They'll begin to give out the blessing that you've given them. They'll begin to give it out because they're in the overflow. They don't have room to receive it all. They're walking in the overflow. They're living in the overflow. And blessing upon blessing upon blessing is coming into their life. The windows of heaven are being opened before them. And blessings are coming down out of heaven, take, overtaking them, overflowing them. Overflowing blessing in the name of Jesus. And I decree it. I declare it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I decree and declare overflowing blessing, overflowing miracles in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree it and I declare it to be so. And in the name of Jesus, we tell you, Satan, right now, take your hands off of them. Take your hands off of their property. Take your hands off of their bodies. Take your hands off of their finances. Take your hands off of their job. We stop you in the name of Jesus and through the power of His shed blood. And miracles are released now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Now, if you believe that, lift both hands and give God praise for it. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We worship you. We worship you. <laughs> we worship you and we praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's foot or ankle was just healed. Praise God. I don't know what if you turned it over or sprained it or whatever, but I just saw in the name of Jesus a foot and ankle in that area being healed. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's, there's miracles here. Just take them. Just take them. Just take them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I also hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that those things which have become burdensome to you, those things are being dealt with now in the realm of the Spirit and that the burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. And that which had was in time past a burden to you shall become a joy in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we come against cancer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we despise cancer. We hate cancer, and I know you do. So we know we're on the right track. We're on the right side. And in the name of Jesus, you said decree and declare a thing that it might be, uh, that you might be justified. So in now, in the name of Jesus, every person in this body that has some type of cancer, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare in that great, powerful, wonderful name, and in the overflow of your blessing, I decree and declare cancer, die in the name of Jesus. You must go in the name of Jesus, for you have no part, no right in the body of Christ. And we thank you for healing. We thank you that every cancer cell dies in the name of Jesus. 
and it leaves their bodies in the name of Jesus and they are made completely and totally whole. <coughs> and Father, we pray that you do it in such a way that there will be no doubt, that there will be no question, but that it was the hand of the Lord. And you shall receive all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise God. <coughs> Praise God. Do, do, do you have anything? Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you believe God's done something? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I believe we'll receive testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe we'll receive testimony of the goodness of God. Now, when you go out of this place, don't go out and say, well, I don't know. <coughs> go out saying, praise God, I'm in the overflow now. I stepped into the overflow today. Praise God. I'm in the overflow of God's blessing. Hallelujah. And it's not just for a special few. It's for everybody. It's for all of God's children. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that this church is going to step and not going to. We are. We stepped into that overflow. And the blessings of God is coming into this place. And we're going to fulfill the plan and purpose of God for this church. This church didn't just happen by chance. It was given by vision to a man of God. Hallelujah. And... Uh, I, I know this, this, this building, this church here, this body of believers is not here just by accident. We are here because it's divinely appointed and we have a purpose that God wants us to fulfill. And I'm determined in the name of Jesus that I'm not going to leave this earth until we have fulfilled the purpose, the plan, the call of God for this church and it shall glorify God and they're going to know that there is a God in Gleaning Mission Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're not trying to be politically correct. We're not trying to please people. We're doing our best to please Almighty God. And He's going to receive all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And there's no big eyes and little use. It's just us working together to accomplish God's will and purpose for this place. And there was prophecy given in 1980 that this church <coughs> shall be a filling station of the Holy Ghost on planet Earth. Not the only one, but one of the ones. And that it shall be a, like a light on a hill. People that are stumbling around in the darkness will be able to look to this place and they shall see the light of God and they'll be drawn into this place. You watch it. We're stepping into in the overflow. Into the children's church. Not just in this sanctuary, but over in the nursery, over in the children's church. There's not going to be a place in this church that you can get and hide from it. It's, it's filling this place. Hallelujah. All of us are included. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, do you want to overflow some more or what you want to do? Well, praise God. Let, let's, let's play it one more time. Hallelujah. Step into that overflow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>
praise God, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I want you to do something. All this next week, practice walking in the overflow. Amen. If you have to walk through your house just, and your wife asks you what you're doing, you just say, I'm walking in the overflow. Hallelujah. And if, and it, <laughs> If the husband asks the wife what she's doing, you just turn around and say, Ah, oh, honey, I'm walking in the overflow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to confess it if you're going to possess it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, and if you want to step up, I'm stepping over the fence. I'm getting in the overflow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm stepping over into the green pastures. Hallelujah. And God is, I'm telling you, something took place here. This, this wasn't just some show we wanted to put on. I didn't even have this planned. I've got notes here I wanted to preach. I'll have to save them. Keep them on the back burner. But uh, something took place here today. I believe there were some things that were broken down, that was hindering, that's out of the way now, and we are free and clear, praise God, to walk in the blessings of God, amen, and how many of you will tell somebody, amen, if you receive it, tell it, praise God, amen, you say, well, Jesus told some of them not to tell it, well, that depends on where you're at, you know. That was a situation that if he don't, he said, don't go back into the town and tell because there's so much doubt and unbelief in that town, they'll talk you out of what God's done for you. God will show you who to tell it to. Amen? Praise God. There'll be those who are hungry just like you and who are waiting for somebody to speak a word to them that will transform their life and change them. Praise God. I remember talking to somebody on an occasion, and uh, you know, I I did. It was kind of kind of hard what I had to say. I mean, not that I was, you know, just against them, but I had to say something hard that God gave me. And when I spoke it, to, I said, "The only way I know to do it is just say what God told me." And when I did, they began to weep, and they said, I know it, I know it, I know it, but I was just waiting on somebody to help me. There may be a lot of people out there, they know it, but they're just waiting on somebody to help them. And you may be the one that God chooses to speak a word into that person's life that will change them forever. Praise God. Well, we love you, we appreciate you. Are you glad you came today? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a good way to wind up the 4th of July, isn't it? <clears throat> Praise God. In the presence of God, living in the overflow. Amen. We appreciate you and love you. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for being patient as we've endeavored to minister the things of God to you. I believe that's what God wanted to do in your heart and life today. Now you can go out of this place saying, I am blessed and I am walking in the overflow. Amen. Praise God. Shake hands with at least two or three people. Tell them you love them. Jesus loves them. It'll make you feel better and it will them too. God bless you and you are dismissed.